Hi, it's Mike Thornton from Pro Tools Expert, and today I'm joined by Mark Franken from Sounds in Sync, and we've a new version of Eddyload, which is a conforming software package to enable us to conform source high quality audio to an existing picture edit. But Eddyload version 3 brings us more as well. Yeah, thanks, Mike. What I wanted to show you today was a new version, Eddyload 3 which gives us the option to be able to compare this within the application, as opposed to conforming, as you explained, where we are conforming location web files to match the picture. But before I get into the new, new features of being able to compare the lists, so just for your people that aren't familiar with Load, the other features that it can do, apart from conforming, is we can also export a picture cut track and scene change track where we can put cuts on the picture change points when we have a picture list loaded. So we can see on your Pro Tools session the third track down, in fact, is this picture cut track, isn't it? So it's, yeah. a, it's effectively dummy re Pro Tools regions with effectively regional clip names which relate to what the pictures are at that point and also presumably show us where there's a picture edit? Yes, correctly. Th th these are all the picture edits, which uh, make it a lot, lot simpler and quicker to actually cut your atmospheres, which are down on these tracks here. And so you can also generate a scene change track. If this was a drama show, you could create cuts on the scene boundaries. You can also create a scene change track, which ties in with our ADR queuing application, EDQ. So a couple of other things we can do previously with Eddie Load. You can also create a MIDI file which drives our application Eddie Prompt so you can display video cues for mixes and Foley artists so that can actually cue them visually on screen when picture changes happen or scene changes happen. It's a very powerful application to be able to manipulate edit data and effectively create your own workflows depending on what your requirements are. So what do we get in version 3? So with version 3 what we get is this new compare window but before I go into the details of that I'll just quickly show you what the process of reconforming is within this session for people that aren't that familiar with reconforming. So here we've got a version 4 video that one of our clients look print graciously uh, allowed us to use for this demonstration and uh, what we did was record the dialogue here on these two tracks and lay up sound effects and atmoses for these pictures and these pictures are all shot mute so uh, all they provided us was the image and the music and what we did was edit these tracks and mix them and provide them with the bounce a week later they came round and of course they says oh we've made a few picture changes to this uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you go oh yeah here we go again indeed so uh, as you'll see in the version 4 pictures the first shot looks like that we go to the toggle over to the version 6 pictures we've got a couple of extra shots and here's the first shot that was in the version 4 now because these uh, footage was all shot mute we don't have a guide track to be able to use as a reference to see where shots have come and moved to so we're actually relying on being able to compare the actual vision footage now luckily with this we were able to get a couple of EDLs of the picture edit and here's the vision EDL of the version 4 pictures. Yeah, so the, the EDLs can often be of basically a text file, so you can almost read them as a text file. Obviously, the different formats of EDL, but often the, the very simple ones, as you say, are just a simple text file. And yes. So you, you, you can basically, presumably, with the compare window, you're going to compare the old EDL with the new EDL. Yes, correct, Mike. Um, yeah, th this is a CMX3600 EDL, but Eddie Load will import EDLs from Final Cut or Media Composer, any range of uh, formatted EDL files which are in a text document, including the new file 32 EDLs. But uh, yeah, like you say, um, we have to compare these files, so we just open up this new compare window. We create a new project called Poster Candy and setting it to 24 frames and what this new window allows you to do is drag and drop several files at once 
it automatically lifts out the version number from the EDL file name and in this instance we won't set a group name we'll load them directly into the root folder here what we can also do is save all these settings they're all default settings at the moment also save these two files as a single file so you haven't got to go rummaging around your uh, computer looking for the original EDLs because they're now going to be saved in a, in a dedicated folder effectively that you can presumably append to as version 3, version 4 comes along. You can continue to add to that and resave it. Exactly. And, uh, and, and move that between machines or whatever you need. So, yeah, it's a convenient file to have everything yeah. loaded in. And then what we need to do is select the old version and new version lists. Now, you might have several old versions um, there, but uh, for this one, we'll just select uh, old and new here, and we can then compare the lists, and there, just like that, it's worked out what the differences are between the lists. We've got nine events, or eight changes, and with the version 3 added load, we can also display an overview window. Wow. So you can really see exactly what's gone on. So presumably... The white sections on the source are clips that are no longer used in the new one? Yeah, precisely. And then the black ones are clips that have appeared in the new version? Correct, yeah, the, the new footage that you'll have to lay up new sounds for. And you can also see here that it's actually they've trimmed down the old version and tightened up the edits. Yeah. So what we can do now is actually apply this change list to our Pro Tools session automatically. And to do that, we'll just hop back to Pro Tools and first we'll group the tracks that need to be reconformed. And we'll just uh, go Apple G and we'll call this Recon. And so we're going to reconform the old video, the automation and all the audio and any automation that are within those tracks. And so the other thing we need to do as part of reconforming is we need to move this version 4 material out of the way so that we can create push it down the timeline so that you've got some space to to put the new version back where it belongs correct yeah exactly and uh, Edilo can do this for you automatically all we do is to start the reconform process is hit Pro Tools reconform I will close that compare window and then we can tell it to we could nudge it one hour, two hours, depending on how long the program is, but because this is only less than a minute long, we can just nudge the source material up half an hour. So the half an hour nudge is a really neat thing, because obviously with film, where you've got reels, you tend to work a reel at a time, which is basically 20 minutes long. You can effectively put your temporary holding section in that gap, because of course reels tend to be laid out one hour for reel one, two hours at reel two, three hours, reel three, and so on. So you've got that space between the reels. So being able to nudge up half an hour rather than having to nudge up a whole hour means that you can slot your sort of holding pattern in the gaps between the reels. Yeah, precisely, Mike. Yeah, it's, it, it, and, and it just means that when you do repairs or you need to go to back to your original version for, say, reel one, it's only half an hour down the timeline rather than, say, seven or eight hours down the timeline. Yeah. So now we'll just go OK with that, and then we get a list of things to set up in Pro Tools just to confirm everything's ready to go. And then we just hit Continue, and that load just asks you to confirm where the source material starts and ends or just to make sure it's going to grab enough of the timeline we just hit move source and then here it goes it's moved that version 4 of material down to 1 hour 30 and what I'll do is I'll just zoom in to the 1 hour mark so we can see what uh, Italo is going to do in terms of pasting the version 6 and when we just hit reconform all events and just during this process, make sure we don't click the mouse or hit any keystrokes. And that's presumably because Eddie Load is actually using keystrokes to do this process, which is why we grouped all the tracks together in the first place. Yes, yeah, precisely. So it's sending those keystrokes to Pro Tools and reconforming your pictures, your automation, and those audio clips to match those new version 6 pictures. And here we go. We can, for instance... Just click on this shot here and we can toggle between the version 6 and version 4 pictures and we see we've got an exact match here. And playing the version 6 pictures, I can just say play play here and you can hear 
all those sounds from version 4 now sync up with version 6 pictures and we've got a shot here which is new which we'd have to lay up some new sounds for. So it's a very quick way of getting everything perfectly in sync and then you can just spot through the tab through. So yeah, there'll be a few points where there's a cut taken place that maybe is messed up a crossfade or such as you've got a certain amount of tidying up to do. Correct. But at least you know everything's going to be in sync with the new picture. Yeah, I mean it's still an awful lot less work than having to manually work out what the offsets were and drag it up and down the Pro Tools session. And so yeah, that is just so nice to watch it see it actually just go ahead and do it for you. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that that's that's the in a nutshell how the reconforming works with Adelode. So what I wanted to do was also show a couple of new f things that we've put into this compare window. Because you can compare more than one EDL. So yeah, you, here you've got a series of versions of a film, you've got you know, Reel 1, Reel 2, and you've you've got them grouped in folders which looks like a reverse date format. So that's what they were on that date. So the 1st of June 2012, uh, and then you've got another one, 27th, effectively 23rd of uh, July 2012. Correct. And then a, a one, uh, yeah, so you've got those laid out. And so presumably we can compare all of those all at once. Yeah, exactly. By grouping these EDLs into the folders, it not only puts them in a convenient container, but you'll see when Edit Load actually loads these up, it's, it's just batching loading all of these seven EDLs at once. It defaults what we call the group or a group name to the folder name and it's lifted out the role number and version number directly out of the file names. So we can just hit load and then it's loaded up all those EDLs into the one group. Just to save time, what I can do is load up, as they say, one Here's I created. we did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and here we've got the three groups loaded up. We can just uh, expand all three. And previously what we did was say, select one EDL list, uh, an old new version. What we can do now is select a whole group. So we can compare this group of lists to this group of lists, hit compare. And hey presto, it's found 241 changes. But this is the magic bit for me here, where you actually do the overview, because you can see what's happened. You can see that some stuff has actually, you know, there's a green now in the uh, real one area, which was obviously, I can't quite tell whether it was real three or real five stuff, but you can see that there's been significant changes taken place. And it's the visually, you can see an overview of exactly what's happened just from uh, from that overview. Yeah, yeah, and, and you also get these colours in the actual real names here. So this is why it's important to set the real names correctly when you load these lists, because then you can see in the change list what session effectively or what you have to load as the source. So that's a really powerful thing of edit load is to be able to um, select groups of lists. And another thing you can do is you can actually select several groups of sources and what this does is edit load will first compare these target lists to the most recent version of sources and any yeah, some presumably sometimes it, you know in, in saying that in the second revision a scene might have been dropped that's in the first version uh, and it's been reinstated back into version 3 so presumably it can pick up and uh, content from the earlier versions and compare that and bring that into the revised session yeah, precisely. So it, it automatically finds dropped material and you can select up to six old versions and it will automatically find them and then you can see in the role name of your change list exactly which version it's picked them up from. Another th new thing in EditLoad is, uh, or something that was part of Editrace, was to be able to compare several vision layers of an edit list and we can do that. So why... Why would we get different vision layers? Is this all to do with video effects and stuff? In the vision edit, if they've composited shots and put different elements on different layers, rather than actually flattening that information and down into one file, it's actually better if you get a vision EDL from all the different layers. And edit loads comparing al algorithm, it actually prioritizes which layers it compares first. And so you get a much better comparison between the lists. Yeah, because we may well have sound effects that are being triggered off one of those layers. 
Correct. If you've got uh, EDLs from several layers, what you can do is you can check this box here to combine multiple vision EDLs. And what that will then do is load those EDLs into the one edit list as such and automatically handle that for you. So again, it does it all in the background, but you know, so it keeps it clear visually, but it's handling all of that for us in the background. Exactly, yeah. And one of the most powerful features of uh, this new compare window, which we didn't have in the Editrace website, was, I'll just show you here, the edit data of this particular list. It's lifted out the role name and clip name data from the list, but we've also got a new field here called the match name. And what that contains is either the role name, the clip name, or a cleaned up version of the clip name when this happens to be a visual effects shot. And with Load actually setting this match name, whereas you load, it doesn't actually have to decide and clean up these clip names each time you compare the list. And these settings here are actually set in the match settings window here, where we can either go all role name, clip name, or... Yeah, so we can set up quite powerful sets of rules to, to make sure that cleaning up works well. And I see you've got a test setting button as well, so you can check that your settings will actually work without trashing a, a project. Well, yeah, it loads up all the events of all the atlists in the actual project at the moment. And it will actually show you here that it's actually stripping out the version information from the clip name correctly between the visual effects shot. And so what this, for you as a sound editor, means is if you lay up sound effects for a visual effects shot and those visual effects shots get updated, any load will be able to track those shots and see them as the same shot. And you will then be able to retain those sounds that you laid up and they won't get lost every time the visual effects get updated. Yeah, that's really great. And so, yeah, the, the other basically the, the main new features within the compare window. And what I can do lastly is just show you Eddie Load running in Windows. So uh, is running Windows something new to version 3 or is that something that was in version 2? No, it's, it's, it's always been there. So, yeah, we've got the same sort of compare windows, all the, di the same stuff that we just saw in the Mac version. Precisely. And uh, this project that we saved in Mac, we can load up in Windows. You yep. can select the old new version, and here you can see it runs exactly yep. the same as the Mac yep. version. That's really good. So, yeah, it doesn't matter whether you've got editors working on the Mac platform or the PC platform, just as we do with Pro Tools. If one person's working on Windows, you can use Eddyload and Pro Tools on Windows and then move a project across without any compatibility issues uh, and work on a Mac version and vice versa. Exactly. So if you'd like to try Eddyload version 3 out, it can be downloaded from the Sounds and Sync website from our download page, either the Mac or Windows versions. And how long will the uh, free trial w work for? Is it 14 days? Oh, no, it's, uh, it is three days, but if you need uh, longer, you can just contact us via our contact page and give us your uh, iLock user ID, and we will be more than happy to provide a, an extended trial license for it. So very much it is the old adage with any software, try before you buy. <laughs> exactly. So what about existing version 2 owners? Have you got some sort of upgrade route to get to version 3? Yes, there certainly is. Um, well, if you upgrade before the end of November 2013, you'll get a free upgrade to version 3. So yes, uh, now's the time to upgrade and uh, get these great new features. So there we go. Well, Mark, thank you very much for uh, taking us through what Eddyload can do and especially all the new features in Eddyload version 3. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mike. Thank you.